Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We're talking about the pandemic's impact on small businesses. Um, we have with us someone who's written an article, How Big Government, How Big Government Stacked the Deck Against Small Businesses. Hannah Cox is joining us via Zoom, and um, she is a fellow with the Foundation for Economic Education, also has a show on YouTube, and, and an interesting discussion here. So I appreciate the back and forth. And let's now take some calls. We have Mike on the line. Hello, Mike. Hey, good evening, Ben, and go right good ahead. evening to you, uh, guest. Uh, first of all, she said three misleading things. Uh, one is that uh, I believe if we had a state in level one the first time around, and if everybody, at least 90% of the population, had a uh, face the shower, wearing a mask or a shield, that basically at this point in time, we would have had it pretty much contained to certain areas and districts of, and, and metrics on a grid to tell you exactly where it is in a smaller detail but we didn't do that we we are americans and we want our right to be able to to die by catching a disease the next statement would i would say is that she's saying the hospitals are not overrun i i dare to ask any healthcare professional nurse anybody works in the hospital doctors and and see if that's true and the last one if small business owners don't believe that uh, covid is a real Thing. Why did they lobby so much to the state Tennessee legislators to have it where they can't be sued if somebody catches COVID? And I'll hang up and listen. Yeah, have a good night. All right, Mike. Thanks. So, so three things there. Um, what about that? So in Tennessee, they did, and I, I think that was probably a national thing. Businesses lobbied so to get get it so they could not be sued if, if someone caught COVID inside their business, an employee or a customer. Um, what that's one of his questions there what what do you have to say about that well he says that the, that that's um he's pushing back on a statement i didn't even say i didn't say small business owners don't believe in covid so i'm not sure where he got that but um i, I do think it's smart for them to push back they shouldn't be held liable for a disease that nobody can control least of all the government and least of all shutdowns um no no other case do we ever see business owners liable for things like the flu or for a virus um, or for anything else you might contract in, in their restaurants or in their establishments and so they shouldn't be liable for this either um but it's just a common sense framework that i think we have to have it's one of the few areas i think government actually does need to be involved is in setting a just legal framework for business to operate within so I think that's kind of a run-of-the-mill thing. Um, secondarily, he's not correct. The hospitals are not overwhelmed. There have been very few instances where they uh, started to approach capacity and we're looking at having to use their overflow space, but that actually hasn't happened almost anywhere other than New York City. Um, and again, they had thousands and thousands of sitting open beds in New York City at that time that they didn't ever use. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars wasted because of the regulations that prevented people from using them. So he's, he's not accurate on that either. And then his first statement about the tracking um, and the imaginary uh, system he thinks that we have to track people. I don't know where he got it. No other country has it. Um, I've never seen that happen anywhere across the world. I will say that looking uh, across the globe at people who have handled this best, we really can point to places like Sweden who never locked down, who continue to have far lower death rates, far lower rates of, uh, of COVID cases and who've kept their economy going um, compared to places like Italy that wouldn't let people lose, leave their houses and that have had um, still massive outbreaks in spite of that. And so there's nothing about this where it's like, we're Americans, we just don't want to follow procedure. No, I think as a whole, it's right that we push back on things that aren't sensical. We can look at other countries that experienced this pandemic before us, see what worked and what didn't. And largely the lockdowns have not worked anywhere. And now uh, to push back a little, aren't I, f I feel like hospitals are saying we are near capacity. You know, you have to act responsibly or we will be overrun. I certainly feel like in New York they were overrun. So, I, I mean, I guess I don't have a picture myself, but I feel like unless the news is all wrong, hospitals, we are seeing growing numbers all across the country. Many hospitals here in Tennessee, there are a handful of ICU beds open. Um, so I push back on you, I guess, a little bit about that hospitals are not overrun. It seems like they're, they are very near capacity. They're very concerned about what they're seeing. Do you agree with that or not? I disagree with that. We do see a growing number of cases as a whole. We do not see hospitals overwhelmed. I do think there are a few people in the media that continue to fear monger around this. And I do think we should take precaution. Like I said, I've never advocated against that. 
social distance, be smart, do what you can. Um, but as a whole, we're not seeing that. And I haven't followed the Nashville news that closely since I left, but I believe there was a piece that came out just a couple months ago even that kind of flipped it on its head. The media had been saying there that your hospitals were almost overwhelmed, that they were all short on beds. And this report came out that showed that had never been the case. I think it was uh, in the Tennessean, if I believe. I don't know. I don't know about that. Me, I'll have to sure look at the numbers. Released. I think we're very close to capacity at this point. We're certainly seeing much higher numbers. Um, the death rate is, has gone down as we learned how to treat it. But I think I, I really thought hospital beds. We'll, we'll have to look at that. But OK, so you're saying you're saying that's not the case. Then you're bringing up Sweden. Is Sweden a success story or didn't Sweden? They're, they're having pretty serious problems with their elderly population as well. I haven't looked at their, dat at their data for the past month or so, but as a whole, yes, they've had a far lower number of cases and of deaths in the country than others have. And again, they were one of the few that never shut down at all. Um, you can also look at some microcosms of the states and see how different states have responded to this and largely as a whole states like where I am, South Carolina, which is very, I mean, very, I think they shut down for maybe three weeks. They, they very seldomly have shut down and as a whole have been open. And, since May have had far lower amounts of cases. Our death rate has never been anywhere close to something like New York City. And I will continue to go back to New York City and say, New York City's death rate at the height of it, where I was there, they were having 700, 800 people die a day, and they certainly were overwhelmed, came down to the fact that they had bad policies that trapped people in overflowing hospitals, despite the fact that they had a full ship, despite the fact they had like four or five open stations where they were paying people to come from all over the country and work thousands of sitting open beds that were never accessed. They were never accessed. It should piss people off. They got people killed there. Um, okay, yeah, you're talking about the, the ship that came into New York. There's obviously higher density there in New York. Uh, all right, so if you're saying South Carolina did things right, how are small businesses there? I feel like small businesses in South Carolina are also struggling. Is that is that a fair statement? If you're saying they didn't do shutdowns in South Carolina and, and things are just fine there, hospitals are fine, the small businesses, the impact is still there for the small businesses in a place like South Carolina, right? To some extent, but it hasn't been as severe. Now, of course, there's going to be repercussions. There's going to be some impact on businesses just because we are in a pandemic. I think people are largely choosing to social distance. We see people choosing to go out less. We see people choosing um, how they spend their time, which kind of environments they feel more comfortable in. You don't need the government to tell you that. We haven't had it in South Carolina and people are still doing that. Most places you go are social distance. Most places you go aren't packed. We've had church services. We still see probably about half the number of people coming back to what were coming before the pandemic. So, of course, they're still going to be negatively impacted, but those negative impacts aren't um, complicated and compounded by the government coming in and making it even worse by shutting down arbitrarily some businesses. Let's go to Jack. Hello, Jack. Yes. Go right ahead. Ben, I, I, just, I just have tuned in and I had to call in. I feel so sorry for you to have to talk to someone with, I, I, I guess, I, I, I would love to lodge a complaint for you, Ben. You, you are getting just verbally jujitsu tonight. Um, and it's because this is literally the example of the dumbing down of news, talk radio, whatever you want to call it. Who is this person that has zero expertise on anything other than writing an article for Newsmax, living in New York City so she can then say she's got expertise about government regulation? I just, it, it, I just had to call in. I feel sorry for you, Ben. <laughs> I pulled the plug. The, the other thing, the, the thing that really gets my goat here is this, the broad brush, spro uh, broad brush uh, strokes that this, this woman is, is, is providing tonight is not doing anything other than, um, you know, just the, an example is big government versus small business. I do think there's one thing about that, that that to me is correct in terms of big government not getting it right. And, and that is a perfect example of where Donald J. Trump totally screwed this thing up. So I think she is right on one one point. Big government did mess this up, and that at the, at the very top of that big government was Donald J. Trump. Ben, good luck for the rest of the night. 
my <laughs> heart's with you. Well, all right, thank you. I mean, I don't need I don't need that. I understand what he's saying. You're not a medical expert here. You have an opinion. That's fine. He's saying you're making broad um, brush, you know, sort of comments about many people died. And, and I, my concern is that is kind of Monday morning quarterbacking. It was a, a, a pandemic. There were major concerns, people dying. You know, they had to do something. And now it's easy to come in and say, oh, well, they did this wrong. They did that wrong. And, and so I guess his, his concern is that you're not fully qualified to say some of the things you're saying. I think in the article that you've written, it is interesting about how businesses, some businesses have boomed and uh, small businesses have suffered and how um, the money that was sent from the government went to some of these big booming businesses. Basically, the government helped pick winners and losers. That is interesting. I don't know that we're qualified to sit here and say, well, that government was totally wrong to, to lock down or this policy failed when it comes to medical stuff. That's, I guess, where he's coming from. When you start getting into the medical thing, is are you qualified to make these sort of broad brush sort of comments? Well, I'm not the one making the comments. I'm regurgitating what the experts are now saying. And I actually am asked to come on and give my opinion because I've done a good bit of research, been presenting this information. People are hungry for it because they're tired of being fed once the narrative around this issue. I didn't actually hear him provide anything to counter anything I've said. He just doesn't like what I'm saying. So I think that's kind of a weak sauce call. Uh, as a whole, there's plenty of things to back me up. You don't have to listen to what I'm saying. Go and do the research for yourself. I have, I think a lot of people have it. And when we say that the government had to do something in the face of a pandemic, I have an issue with that because I think there's always this idea of like government has to come in and do something and save us, even though they fail and do a bad job at it and end up hurting us as an end result time after time after time after time. And people just never learn their lessons from that because they want somebody to come in and take care of them, I guess. As a whole, there were scientists, there were doctors, there were people who were pushing back on this all along. They were not heralded, they were not listened to, they were often scoffed at, pushed aside. We've now seen them proven right time after time after time after time. And so we can keep going 10 rounds. I don't need that guy to like or respect me, but he's going to see that I'm right and he's going to see that the experts who've been pushing back on this all along have been right, and I'm going to continue to report on it. The experts also say right now in places where the numbers are exploding, it's important to, you know, not open up restaurants entirely. Um, so there's that, and, and there are plenty of experts who say that. Do you disagree with that? I think there's some experts who say that and there's some experts who push back as a whole. Um, I think it really does depend on the setting. But yes, if restaurants are ventilated, if they're opening their windows, if they're providing outdoor dining, I think it makes no scientific sense to say that restaurants can't open up and serve people. So then let's talk about um, the response as far as money, as far as, as the, the stimulus and the bailout. As I said, okay, we're, we're coming up to another bailout that, that Congress is talking about doing. You're saying it should not be, um, it should only, I guess, tell me again what you're saying as far as the bailout. We'll move on from this discussion about, okay, should the government require people to, I guess, businesses, put, put restrictions on businesses in the midst of a pandemic. What about, what, what have you also, what have you learned as far as money going to businesses and, and bailouts? What is your concern there? As a whole, the government should not be picking winners or losers. And that's always what happens when the government is allocating dollars to some businesses. Some people get it, others don't. It's it's corporate welfare. It's not free market capitalism. It's not right. It's not fair. Um, as a whole, we do tend to see who ends up getting those dollars. There are people who can afford big lobbyists. There are people who can come in and work for carve outs and legislation. People can come in and make sure that everything flows in their best interest. Um, if you look at the, the past stimulus act that they passed, there was unbelievable Believable pork in it. We saw Nancy Pelosi stick it with many districts that were very wealthy, got tons of money. We saw it go to the arts. We saw social programs get it. We saw all manner of people get these dollars. It had nothing to do with the pandemic. It was just an excuse for politicians to pad the pockets of people who turn around and pad their pockets. And so I don't think we should have another stimulus. I'm fine with an elevated amount of unemployment or sending stimulus checks directly to people who have had their businesses taken, their livelihood taken away. Um, but I think that should again be on a very limited basis. I don't think this should be an ongoing thing. We need to let people get back to work. So then, all right, then we're going to go to break here. So then the pandemic is coming. 
essentially the government should do nothing. They shouldn't restrict uh, businesses and they shouldn't bail businesses out. The government should do just nothing. Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, here, there's a lot the government should have done, and mainly it was get out of its way. They needed to repeal regulations. They needed to get rid of occupational licenses that didn't let nurses cross state lines to provide care. They needed to remove regulations that prevented us from gearing up the production of ventilators, mask, test. They needed to get out of the way and make sure that pharmaceutical companies could quickly produce a vaccine and get it through testing and get it to the people. There was all kinds of things they needed to do, but most of it was getting their own regulations out of the way that always make healthcare more expensive and slower for everybody. Um, those things should be done away with altogether, but certainly during a pandemic. Secondarily, they needed to issue clear, consistent guidelines and communication to people. They didn't do that. They've lied, they've given wrongful information, they've addressed things that had nothing to do with the pandemic. Like we've seen um, in some areas, a lot of teachers unions have tried to prevent the reopening of schools unless they get a climate change agenda through. They've done all kinds of things to try to get their agenda through that had nothing to do with actually preventing spread of the disease, keeping people safe. Um, they needed to give clear communication. They needed to let people make the best decisions for them and their communities, understanding that every community is different, that localized control is best, that people can respond respond to um, always changing, very rapidly changing information, oftentimes in this situation, best at the local level. They didn't do those very basic things. And I would actually agree with the man who called earlier. I think Trump is somewhat to blame. I think there's others to blame as well, but that was a, a catastrophic failure we saw from the top down. Okay, we will take a break and we will continue to take calls. If you want to call in, there's a number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.